Well, good afternoon. I'm Tom Kuhn, and welcome to week seven of our Financial Roundtable for Schools. Um, such a big part of the ecosystem here. And just like salons and spas, school owners are small business owners with their own financial challenges. So I uh, love that we're doing these roundtables with you. And thanks for showing up. I read um, several of the chat, uh, you people, several of you from across the country. And uh, I'm really excited about today. And uh, I want to give some thanks to Pivot Point uh, for helping to sponsor these roundtables and for the great work that we do. We're going to hear a lot more about Pivot Point in a few minutes here. I also want to um, thank Jared um, Sanders from Lightheart Sanders uh, CPAs, who's doing a great job of serving the school market. And also, I love that they're working on some benchmarking for school. So thanks for being part of this and for helping us to uh, make this time special. Uh, speaking of special, we have a special guest today, uh, the one and only Robert Passage uh, from Pivot Point. Robert, Robert and I have something in common with the one and only Bill Murray. We'll get to that in a moment here. So we just earlier today, we had a financial roundtable for salons and spas. Uh, it was week 52. And so we do these roundtables most every week. We usually take a, a week off every month for something, use a holiday or something like that. So we're on this week, we're on next week, uh, and we can do the schedule at the end of this uh, when we're going to be skipping. But uh, we've developed an amazing brain trust of individuals that have helped contribute during these roundtables. We're very thankful for that. Uh, that is true with our salon roundtable, as well as our school roundtable, and it keeps growing and it keeps getting better. So thanks to members of the brain trust. Uh, we kicked this um, roundtable, we kicked these roundtables off with um, three market leaders, Susan Heisey from the Institute of Beauty and Wellness and Neroli Salons, Nicole Cumberlander. Uh, from Paul Mitchell Schools in Ohio, as well as Lanell Lynch from Bellis Academy. Um, we hope that you have some light bulb moments today. And I think what we will do here without any further ado, first of all, Robert, how are you today for the second time? Very good, Tom. Thank you so much for inviting me. And thank you so much for creating this forum for school owners. I saw a lot of familiar names uh, on the chat this morning. So uh, welcome to everyone. Great. Well, love doing this. It's one of my highlights of my week. So, Robert, first of all, we have to answer the question. So what do we have in common with Bill Murray? You, Bill Murray, and myself at different generations, of course, uh, went to the same high school in the Chicago area, Laola. So we found that out about each other. So that was a little cool fact. So, Robert, you're from the Chicago area, of course. Uh, I think most everybody knows about Pivot Point, but tell us a little bit about yourself just in case someone needs to be reminded. Sure. And one of the things I failed to mention on the earlier call, Tom, is uh, Bill Murray's sister actually uh, was a nun and a teacher at my sister's all-girls Catholic high school. So there's another uh, relationship with the Murray family. <laughs> All uh, right. I think most of the folks, obviously, uh, on the school edition of your forum are very familiar with Pivot Point. Uh, it was started in 1962 by my father, Leo Passage, and our company is all about education. Uh, we provide curriculum uh, and content and audiovisual and teacher support uh, for schools, not only here in the U.S., but all over the world. In fact, uh, Pivot Point uh, provides its curriculum in 88 different countries on six continents around the world. Uh, so we're quite well known uh, in the world of education in terms of beauty and wellness. So uh, thrilled to be here today. One of the things that I've seen firsthand and I'm gonna be unapologetic about bragging about your team is that you have an amazing team. And we've gotten to know several members of your team over the last year. And uh, it's been a delight. And certainly you, uh, I look at you as being a servant leader, Robert. We didn't talk about that in the prior call, but you just have this approach that's all about being a great servant. I'm sure you, you may think about that term that may be part of your vocabulary, but certainly when I look at you, it's not really about Robert. It's about the impact um, Robert can make around those around him. So thank you for being an inspiration for um, uh, many, including myself. Well, thank you, Tim. And I use that term actually quite frequently. Um, I like to look at myself as a servant leader. And I remember my father saying years ago, you know, Robert, you can't do everything yourself. 
surround yourself with great people, people that know things that, for example, you don't want to do. Um, and, uh, you know, I've obviously been able to do that. My father was able to do that. And I think in any organization, it's all about the people, right? And uh, I'm fortunate enough to lead a wonderful group of people in our organization. And um, believe me, uh, I don't take that lightly. So appreciate you saying that. You and I have gotten to know each other originally through, well, we've had a journey together over the last couple of years here, and we've gradually gotten to know each other better and better, as well as you've gotten to know Aaron from our team. And um, some of the things that um, I wanted to address today is a couple areas. One really relates to perception issues uh, that plague uh, beauty and wellness. And then secondly, I'm gonna to refer to a phone call I got from you on June 8th and how that resulted in what we feel is going to be uh, something very powerful going into the future. Um, hint for listeners here, uh, we do have an announcement today. And uh, so that's part of what we wanna to do today. So, you know, Robert, I, I came more from the salon side uh, and the school part of the business is something that uh, I've learned over the last year and a half, two years. Um, I've been a former salon owner. I work with salons all the time. And certainly um, I've been very sensitive as you have to perception issues that really plague professional beauty. And I, I think, and I think you'll agree with this, there's a critical challenge uh, in validating beauty and, beauty and wellness pros that they can make a good living compared to their peers. Let's speak about that for a moment, okay? Sure. Well, school owners no doubt know this very well uh, in terms of uh, perception. Um, you know, I think uh, politicians like to use um, data from the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, uh, and they do not uh, reflect very well on what an individual can earn in our industry. And I think people in our industry can earn a lot of money. Uh, depending on whether they want to make a lot of money. You know, the nice thing about our industry is the fact that it is predominantly female. Uh, it is very flexible. Um, people can set their own schedules. Um, you know, school owners know all too well uh, that we attract a lot of single moms. We attract a lot of uh, minority students, uh, for example. Uh, you know, these are folks who are creative, that are good with their hands. These are folks that didn't necessarily want to go to college or university. Uh, many school owners have students who've gone to one or two years of college and decided, you know what, this is not what I wanted to do. This is what my parents expected of me. And now all of a sudden, uh, I, I've taken the opportunity to do something that I've always had a passion for. And again, you know, I think uh, we need to do a much better job of changing those perceptions. You and I both serve on the uh, Board of Directors for the uh, Beauty Changes Lives Foundation, uh, which uh, Linnell Lynch uh, founded. I'm also one of the co-founders along with Jan Arnold. And that foundation has recently established a group uh, of like-minded individuals. Uh, it's a community called Unite as One. Uh, it's an industry think tank. Uh, and one of the things that we've been talking about is this issue of perception and how we can change that. And I happen to chair that committee on perception. There's another uh, committee on communications that Steve Reese chairs. There's another uh, committee on uh, cultural intelligence uh, that Jan Arnold chairs, which I'm very passionate about. In fact, uh, the last two days uh, in my own organization, we've been talking about diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging and how important that is not only to us internally, but externally as well, you know. So perception is a big issue. And I think, uh, you know, um, whether it's television or the film industry, uh, they've not always portrayed us in the most positive light. And for those of us involved in the industry, know that we're very passionate about it. We care a lot about it. And, uh, you know, folks can make a wonderful living, not just financially, but doing something that they truly love. Yeah, you know, I don't like stereotypes. And early in my career, I was an accountant. And of course, there's stereotypes about accountants and there's stereotypes about stylists. And stereotype types are very unhealthy. And 
from my side of the street here, I've gotten to see just amazing success stories from top stylists and owners that have extremely prosperous careers. And I've gotten to work with many of the best of the best. And it just seems so foreign to me to look at some of these statistics for earners. And I just don't think it tells the full story in terms of the potential to have just a fantastic career. As you said, not just from a monetary standpoint, but a quality of life. Absolutely. And you know, Tom, it's not always just about money, right? My father taught me a long time ago, son, you can only eat with one spoon. And, uh, you know, my parents came to this country in 1958. They were both raised during World War II in Europe. Uh, they came to this country with $75 in their pocket, you know, and it wasn't always about the money. It was about hard work. It was doing uh, things that you had a passion for. And, uh, you know, uh, believe me, there are plenty of individuals in our industry that make a lot of money, uh, but there are plenty of people that make a good living maybe not lots of money, but a good living and are happy with that and are happy because they chose a career that they really are passionate and enjoy a lot, you know? So, um, you know, money is important, uh, but money is not the ends to all things, right? So, uh, but we, we have to help. And I think we're gonna talk a little bit about that, you know? I think one of the things that obviously has been lacking in our industry is financial literacy, which you know a lot about and, uh, we need to uh, educate our future professionals on how they can uh, make a good living and make sure that they retire comfortably when they come to the end of their career. So, You, you um, left me a voicemail on June 8th of 2020 that changed the trajectory, not only of me and my company and perhaps um, in some way your company too, but what I believe will change the trajectory of many people's lives. And that phone call I'll never forget. And so maybe you can um, um, talk about that voicemail you left me that leads us to today and the announcement we're gonna make. Sure, be happy to Tom. Um, obviously we're all about education as I've, always, as I've already shared with you know, your audience. And uh, you know, uh, we're good at certain things, but we're not good at everything. And so, you know, one of the approaches that I took several years ago was let's, you know, we had the platform, you know, and I think some of the schools that are on today are familiar with our learning management system called Lab. And it gives us the opportunity not only to curate our own educational programs that we develop, but it also gives us an opportunity to curate best in class education that comes from others. And uh, when I had seen your program, uh, your CUNITY program, I thought this is perfect. This fits us so well. It's a program uh, that is simple and it's a program that is visual. And you know, financial literacy, as I said before, is something that was truly lacking uh, on the school side. Um, and I think it's something that's extremely important for students to learn while they're in school in order to prepare themselves for a long lived career. And so, uh, you know, we had looked at a number of financial literacy programs uh, and yours clearly stood at the top. And I was certainly hopeful, I had my fingers crossed when I left you that message that you would be interested in doing something with us. And I'm excited to say that um, we have an exciting announcement to make. So I'll let you do that. Yes, and our exciting announcement in a moment, I'm gonna introduce my partner who is also my daughter, Erin, who's been very involved in this. So really cutting to the chase with all of you. Um, we are launching a program called Money by Cunity. And it is a program that will proactively address uh, the money skills that are necessary and needed, not only to enter the workforce, but all the way to exit the workforce, all the way to the point where you have a full and prosperous career. So we'll share a little bit more about that with you in a little bit, but uh, our team, um, already had some really, really strong foundations to this, but to really bring it to the students and to make it approachable and simple and fun and interesting and engaging and relevant has been our task ever since that phone call on June 8th, where we rapidly agreed, said uh, the, the short answer to that was, heck yes, Robert, we would be thrilled to do that. We've been wanting to do that it was part of our plans, uh, but with the help of you and your team, that's a reality and we are launching in that very soon. 
Um, uh, this is a prelude announcement to those of you participating. There will be press releases going out, but we really wanted to introduce it to our community first. And um, uh, I, uh, to say we're excited about this would be a dramatic understatement. It's more like a dancing in the streets type excitement to be part of a project like this. So Robert, thank you for your invitation. Thank you for your partnership. And together, I think we can make a really, really big difference and make a big impact uh, in the future generation. It's our pleasure, Tom. You know, we've already done some beta testing and the feedback, feedback that we've gotten has been extremely positive. I know we've already sold several thousand seats, uh, you know, so I think that's a really good indicator of things to come. And uh, for those of you that are not familiar with CUNITY and the product that they've developed for the professional side of our industry, I think you're going to be thrilled when you see this. We're going to launch it, obviously, at uh, the upcoming CEA. Unfortunately, it's virtual again this year. Uh, but Tom uh, and Aaron will be speaking. Uh, one of the segments uh, will be uh, on CUNITY. So, uh, yeah, we couldn't be more excited. Uh, it's much needed, been much needed uh, for a long, long time. And uh, time couldn't be better. Time couldn't be better. Speaking of time, you were very gracious to step away from some meetings that you're part of, some bigger meetings. I promised you that we'd remain disciplined in uh, pulling you away. I do notice it's 18 minutes after the hour, so uh, Aaron and I have more to say about this, but I wanted to be respectful of your time and I felt that we really couldn't go forward without having you part of this uh, introduction. So uh, Robert, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Tom. I look forward to having lunch with you tomorrow. So <laughs> sounds See great. In Minnesota. All right. I love it. Thanks All again. Right. And Thank uh, you. Uh, Robert, before you go, uh, members of our brain trust uh, do get a million dollar um, uh, light bulb. Uh, so welcome to becoming a member of our brain trust for the school roundtable. We'll invite you back. So a virtual applause to you and all the work you do. Thanks, Tom. I'll invest that million dollars carefully. Appreciate it. All right. Very good. Talk to Thank you guys you. soon. Thank you. Right. Bye-bye. Aaron, why don't we, uh, why don't we have you uh, um, come forward here? So if those of you have not met Aaron, this is my partner uh, and daughter, and diligently we've been working together to uh, make a difference in the professional side, and now we're so, so excited the student side. So hello again, Aaron. Hello again, Tom. Thank you for having me on your on a second round table. Great to be here. <laughs> so let's do this. I'm, I'm going to be sensitive to the group's time here. And what, what my objective here is to really give an introduction and then um, uh, get to hear from the group. But before we do that, Michelle from our team, who, who, by the way, has been absolutely instrumental along with Aaron and have worked really, it's like we created a new company for this program. We assembled a new team. Um, we did a tremendous amount of research. We brought our simple and visual practices into this. I brought my background as a, as a financial advisor over the last 30 years into this curriculum, and Michelle's done a really great job of being a part of this. Michelle, why don't you start with a poll here? Let's get a little interact interaction from our group here. All right, so biggest pain points, uh, multiple choice here for you. Um, so we'd love for you just to take a moment and answer the questions as part of this poll uh, just so we can get uh, some of your perspective. So biggest pain points uh, as a school owner or manager, um, would love to hear you. Staff retention's coming up, okay. Um, student count, true or false, uh, lack of financial literacy is a negative impact on loan default rates. Students are adequately prepared. So just take a moment, we'd love to get a little interaction from you. Uh, please do take this uh, questionnaire. Uh, would love to hear from you. We're going to give it probably about another, I don't know, 20 seconds or so. New enrollment, program completion, uh, certain pain points. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Lack of financial literacy has a negative impact on uh, loan default rates. It looks like all but one of you agree with this. Uh, we're getting up to 90%. Uh, true or false, students are adequately prepared for a financially successful career when they leave school. Two of you said yes, but the vast majority are saying no. So yeah, financial literacy and loan default rates, certainly with the right education, it has to make a difference in default rates. And then as far as uh, students adequately be, being prepared for a financially successful career, I'll tell you from the professional side, I, I haven't seen it. I just, I haven't seen 
that they're coming out. And this is not a criticism to these great schools. Uh, it's just the reality that they're just not prepared for it. So Aaron, um, let's do this. I'm going to, I'm going to pull up and together you and I can walk through just some information as well as different ways that people can get involved in the money course. So uh, Aaron, I'm going to start with you. We did polling moments. So Aaron, why don't you, uh, um, we'll go, we'll lobby back and forth on this. Okay. Sure. So you know, for those of you that are new new to this forum and haven't experienced community in the professional space, um, we've been doing this kind of training with professional salon, spa owners, leaders, and their teams for for years and years. And so, one of the things that's become abundantly clear is just the lack of of financial acumen for for many professionals, and just how that creates a ripple effect a ripple effect through the industry at large. And so, we really um, we really took what we've been doing in the professional space and really applied it to an undergraduate student learner because we really believe that uh, this is a critical component to make sure they're successful, they have a financially successful and sustainable and long lasting career in beauty and wellness. We all know that human capital for salons and spas is really challenging and as Robert and Tom shared, overall industry perception is a challenge. And so what we did with this program was really thought extremely carefully, did a lot of market research to supply the most important money skills in an approachable, in a visual, in an actionable manner to really help honor uh, honor the workforce, which is creative, intuitive, emotional, learn by doing, using their hands. So this program is all about empowering students and the next generation with the money skills to match their art and heart, right? That's what this is about. And we know, um, again, we have so much data on this, but only 25% of students and 20% of parents say they are actually prepared to deal with the financial challenges that await them after graduation. I actually personally, you know, and I, I think these are even high, even generous. I would argue that it might even be lower for the majority, um, but there is a challenge and there is a strong lack of financial literacy that's just creating a ripple effect. So um, you'll see on the screen here, we this is the first financial literacy program we believe that is designed specifically for creative learners and and it's made visual, it's simple, it's fun, it's approachable, it's really honest, and it gives them the tools um, to be able to put it into practice and, and learn as they go. Um, some features of this program, it's eight modules. Um, there's five lessons within each module, each have activities and assessments. Um, and we boiled down the most important money lesson. So how to bring money in, how to address your money mindset, how to manage money out. And Tom will go more into the content momentarily. Um, but what the beautiful thing is, is um, these real life money stories, because that allows professionals to really identify themselves. Um, and so I'm actually going to show you a video moment momentarily because this really makes it real. So I'm going to pop on the screen a quick video. It's about two minutes um, and then we'll get back to it. So thank you, Tom. Hi, I'm Camilla, a beauty professional here in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm so excited to be with you today to share the importance of money mindset and to tell you something I wish somebody told me when I was in school, sitting in your place. So there was a time from the outside looking in, it seemed like I was winning. My Instagram following was growing. I hit milestone after milestone, magazine interviews, Good Morning America. I joined Beyonce's Black is King, Bray Team, and then boom, eight months on tour with Madonna. Now that's winning. But to be honest with you, the one place I was not winning was my pocket. The thing is, money never motivated me. So money came and money went. I had no relationship with money, so I had no plan. All these amazing things were happening, but I had nothing to show for it. I had no savings. And to take it a step further, it's almost like I didn't respect myself because I didn't respect my money. So even though I was winning, I was losing. Does that make sense? But that's not a problem I want you to have. Because now when I look back, I wish I had a better relationship with money and boundaries and a plan sooner. I thought because I operated from abundance, I did not need structure, but that's not true. Having structure and the right mindset around money is really what gives you flexibility and success. It's great to work with celebrities, but the thing is a lot of people that do, they wouldn't sit here and be honest about 
the fact that they're probably struggling too. So please use my story as a reminder that you have to get your mind right and your money right. I'll leave you with this. You're going to have winning seasons, but you're also going to have slow seasons. So that's why it's important that no matter what season you're in, you have a strong foundation. Be disciplined and start something today that your future self will thank you for because one day the money you save just might save you. I wish you the best of luck in the money program and nothing but success and abundance. So Aaron, we've been able to get some amazing money stories here and we're always looking for more. So that's a shout out to this audience that if you want to tell your money story, and to be able to impact a future generation of students, please contact us. We're looking for transformations. We already have plenty of them from industry leaders and um, and we and everybody's stepping. Everybody's saying, yes, I got a money story. Yes, I'll tell the money story. Yes, I will you know, be part of this. So Aaron, let's, uh, let's go through this a little bit more. We talked about some of the features. And um, so this will be a bit of an introduction. We'll keep this brief. And I want to go through some of the topics and um, get some of your feedback in terms of are we covering the main topics. So Aaron, just give them a quick overview of what's provided with this money curriculum. Absolutely. Well, everything's on the screen here. And I think kind of some of the key components to call out here is um, this is designed to be super flexible. So for those of you that are school owners, we totally understand that kit prices and um, and timing is limited. So this has a variety of flexible delivery options. And we also want to use this as a way to attract new talent and uh, as a recruitment initiative. So we're providing admissions resources. So when schools are sitting with prospective students and their support systems, they can actually demonstrate that they'll be providing financial literacy training, uh, which is a huge, huge value add. Um, visual resources for instructors. Uh, and then, you know, each student will get two year access. And of course we partner with Pivot Point. So that's, uh, we have, you know, best in class technology as well. And then for students, I mean, you know, it's really eight in vis visually engaging mo modules, which Tom will go through the specific content, timeless money lessons. And I think you saw just an example of some of the money stories that will be featured. And that really makes it real, right? And it makes it approachable and to understand that we all have money stories, right? And so collectively, we're trying to change that together. And we're really encouraging them to get into action with their activities. But again, it's super flexible. Um, and the goal is, is that we want them to leave school with, with solid confidence in their money and to understand not only will they know how to first and foremost be able to make a living, but read their paycheck, understand how to save money, basic uh, investment vehicles, and, and you know just really critical financial literacy topics. So a quick content, we, so we have eight uh, different guides. It's a very diverse group of guides that really lead one for each module. Um, and uh, there's a curriculum overview. I'm going to go through the curriculum very, very quickly. We get a lot of questions about that. We took this very seriously and looked at all of the different things that came from research, my experience, our team's experience. Uh, we collaborated with several industry professionals. And um, first module is really about mindset and just really getting through the fact that there's what we call money in the middle. And let me describe what this means. This means is that uh, there's a perception that um, if you're creative uh, or if you're strong at your craft, that you can't be good at, at money. And we substitute the word or for and. So it's about being great at your craft and great with money skills. Uh, myths and traps, just different things that relate with uh, money and money skills uh, for all generations. The importance of knowing your why. I mean, for many people, money's not the main motivator. Uh, but what money can do for people is the motivator. So it's really digging in and finding out what their why is, as well as the money story. And here's the thing about money stories. Most of us have money stories. And in many cases, they're not very positive. Part of that's just to deal with the brain, the amygdala part of the brain. We retain negative things more than we do positive things. So it's really about setting their mindset in a place where they can have a very prosperous career to be strong technically, as well as with money success. Uh, second module is really about uh, how they're gonna make money, how they're gonna get paid, um, whether it's commission, hourly or hybrid. Uh, also the importance of really driving growth. And uh, in terms of being a point of difference, here's what I will tell you. Um, it is gonna be very easy to communicate to salons 
why you want to have a graduate that went through this program. They're going to become more prepared. They're going to be have fast track success. Um, they're going to understand salon economics. So they're on the same page with owners. And they're going to understand something that we call preneurship. Preneurship is really breaking down the different ways that you can um, um, uh, come to the workforce, either as a solopreneur, which is an independent, an entrepreneur, which is someone that opens up and uh, opens up uh, or buys a salon. And then probably the most practical way that most people enter their careers to be an entrepreneur, which is a business within a business. And this is starting out working in a really great salon. And we do a lot of education about really looking at making money and how you're going to get paid and make sure that you look at things eyes wide open as you consider alternatives from going on your own as an independent, which um, in working with entrepreneurs for almost 35 years, uh, I certainly stress that that may not always be the best idea to go off on your own because there's tax issues, there's structure issues that um, you need to be educated. So I think we really fill a huge gap here and making sure people are understand what the impact is of how they show up in the workforce legally, professionally, and how that relates to things like tax. Um, um, money out and the suspending money, um, needs, wants, and choices, spending tips, uh, spotlight on spending. We break it down into eight spending categories and later on show how to create a budget. We actually teach how to read a P&L, a P&L of one or a P&L for a business. Uh, really, really important section on money borrowed, uh, download on debt, learning about loans, student loans, default rates, et cetera, credit and the importance of credit and how to raise your credit score and the cost of debt. Aaron, we had a, uh, we had feedback. Uh, we did some tests and we had from a student in Ohio and uh, their comment is they, they went through one of the modules and uh, they did something the week before. Let's talk about that for a moment. Yeah, well, thanks, Tom. And so we've done uh, various different beta tests on different modules. And one of the tests that we did was on the cost of debt with um, a wonderful school in Ohio. Shout out to the Cumberlanders for letting us test there. And uh, one of their students, you know, we, we have them evaluate the true cost of debt and we give real life stories. So it's super practical. And the activities, uh, a young man came up to, to the school owner and just said, hey, I wish I would have gotten this two weeks ago because he took out extra money from his student loans purchased a new car and, you know, then actually learned with this program, the true implications and the true cost of that decision around debt. And so, you know, everyone makes, you know, negative money stories. We all have them, right? But if we can hit them with this before they make those mistakes, they're going to be set up for so much more success um, for, you know, for their life and for their career and, and for their family and, and anyone around them in their community. Whole module on savings, uh, building the spending habit. Uh, it's not too early to start saving money, uh, different uh, places to put your money. And like I said, the importance of uh, starting and the power of compounding. Um, whole module on taxation. That's the world I came from. I was a tax advisor for uh, many, many years. And so I was very excited to do this module because, um, and I, we, we should do a little poll on this one. The average American, average American, uh, spends 525000 on taxes in their lifetime. And taxes impact us in so many different ways. And I will tell you, as a former salon owner, if I had a nickel, I don't even know how to say this, for every time we had to explain or it was exposed that someone didn't understand their paycheck, um, I could be a wealthy man. Uh, we had the CFO for Floyd's Barber on the earlier session. He said, this is a huge issue. And they have several members of their team making over $100,000, but they don't know that and they don't understand that. And the impact is sometimes they'll make a life decision to leave the business because they think the grass is greener on the other side when they really don't understand their paycheck. So big piece here. Also tax tips, uh, tax traps, uh, tax truths. I mean, a really powerful session. Each of these modules is very digestible. Um, they have, I think the average video is between eight, 10, midi, uh, eight to 10 to 12 minutes. And they're quick to the point uh, with activities around them. So we take a topic like taxation and make it very digestible. Uh, money plan is the seven mod seventh module. Um, how to develop a budget. What, what is a budget versus what are budgets? 
um, and certain practices and disciplines that are winning money, money patterns like uh, having a weekly money date as it relates to looking at your own financial reality. Again, how to build a budget. We actually, actually we also teach how to build a spreadsheet, which has lots of practical skills. And then finally, we get into some really important topics, for example, talking about money and money and relationships. Uh, I know and we all know that uh, money can be the cause of great angst with couples, with partners. And a lot of that has to do with just not really knowing how to talk about money, avoiding the subject, all of that. So we give some really great reality checks on that so that these young professionals understand how money is gonna, gonna affect your relationships. Money agreements and the importance of business ethics and signing a contract, what is a contract? Ask the importance of asking what you want, asking for help, as well as resources that they can go to, as well as apps, um, and then traditional advisors that are approachable to help solve money issues as they grow through life. One of the things that we're very clear on, we make this curriculum available for two years after um, graduation. And uh, what we know is in many cases, these are not things that they will need to encounter today, but we remind them again and again, this course is there for you when you're at that point when you're gonna come upon this issue. So this is an overview of the curriculum is very well thought out. Um, um, and we had a ton of fun doing it. So Aaron, we've got other things such as um, ways to really come up with what their dreams are, et cetera. So we're gonna spend a few more minutes talking about this and we'll move on, okay? Yep, yeah, and I think, you know, just to highlight really, you know, Tom, you come from a salon owner's perspective, right? And so many of this, um, how, how much do you think this could have changed, you know, when you're leading owners and advising them, change the directory, trajectory of their life if they had gotten some of these skills, right? It's, 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 it's the impact is, I, I can't use a strong enough word. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I see it all the way to retirement age. And um, I see how, again, as a former salon owner myself, again and again, I ask owners, I say, how many of you have made loans to your employees? And pretty much all of them say yes, you know, and they run into a crisis situation. And so as a former owner, um, it's very easy to advocate why this will create better employees, how they'll be, how they'll understand how they're going to make money when they get out of school. They're going to have less issues when they're in the workforce. They could have greater peace of mind. Um, they'll understand a profit and loss statement. So when they sit down with an owner and they talk about compensation and, and pay and just the economics of a salon, they'll be more prepared. And just, Aaron, I could go on about that, but yeah. I won't. Well, and I think, you know, that's one of the things that we're really excited about because um, we're, we're leveraging this and making sure that um, this is a recruitment edge for schools. So it features much of what we're doing in the professional space, featuring our simple visual tools. And we know that many uh, salon owners and our clients in the professional space are super excited to be able to have this as an edge um, for recruitment initiatives. So um, somebody, Aaron, had uh, oh, put, sure. put in the chat they wanted to see module three. So thank you for that. And, and uh, let me see if there's any other comments. But all right, Aaron, let's uh, we'll go a little bit further here. And again, money story. So this is an invitation to if, if any of you feel uh, like you or a member of your team or there's somebody you want to profile that really has a really impactful money story, then reach out to us because it's an opportunity to influence um, a next generation of student. We have already, uh, we already, <laughs> we haven't launched this program yet. And uh, we are in the process of launching it uh, at the end of this month. Uh, we have had some partners um, that um, were on board early with us in the process. And so we already have pre-sold some seats, um, conversation for another day, but stories are a really important part of this curriculum and it makes it real. So, so becoming a money school, Aaron, I think we've got some opportunities for some demos and that kind of stuff. Do you want to speak to that? Yeah, I, I just, you know, this is, this is the first time we are publicly speaking about this. We have just been head down at work and, you know, some of our, our very intimate partners are aware of this and we have a couple of you on the call. So thank you. Uh, that's a shout out to you for being the first to become a money school and really see the value in this for the industry at large. Um, for the entire school and professional ecosystem. So this is a call to action, right? We, we view this as a partnership. So we would love to invite all of you who are school owners, instructors, leaders, 
to become a money school. Um, you know, by investing in this, we see you as investing in the next generation and the industry at large to make sure that students are truly set up for success in their craft of choice. So this program is super flexible with delivery. Our team will work with you to make sure um, you can customize the rollout strategy to make sure that it fits within your existing hours and your kit price and things like that. And um, we're, we're just very excited about it. So I'd love to schedule a personal call with you. Uh, you can book a demo directly on our webpage, communityforschools.com. Michelle will part. Yes, Michael, this is a part of lab. Um, so you can access it there. If you would like to see a more formal tutorial, consider yourselves the first, you guys. This is, we've launched it and we've shared it with our, um, with our professional clients earlier today, but you guys are the second. So this is not public yet. A press release will be coming out shortly. Um, we have already actually um, pre-enrolled or pre-sold um, just about 10,000 seats as of recently. Um, so there is a huge need for this and forward thinking brands and our partners, again, are really recognizing that. So um, I invite you just take a look at the program, right? There's no obligations. I would love to spend time with you and see how we can bring this to your school. Yeah. And certainly as school owners, default rate is a huge metric. Certainly as a school, a school employment and getting good jobs is a metric. And you know, I, I love this quote by Oliver Wendell Holmes, and that is, a mind stretched never returns to its original form. If they have the information early enough in the process, it has to make a difference in default rates. If they have this kind of training, they're going to get and keep great jobs, and they're going to be able to make a great living and not move on because they didn't have realistic expectations about their earning cycle. So anyway, we're, um, uh, I, I don't know... The, you know, it's hard to convey excitement through a virtual environment like this, Aaron, but it is really the most exciting thing I've ever been part of in my professional career. And that is a big statement, given how long I've been on the planet. Well, I'm going to say <laughs> coming coming from being a business partner, Tom gets excited about a lot of stuff. You're very <laughs> passionate about all our programs, but I would say from, from our team perspective, and, you know, we've had so many members on our team, a part of this pro project. And we are so thrilled and honored about this project because it we have already seen the impact this information, even one lesson can change, um, you know, the, the trajectory of a student's life and career. So uh, we are so excited and I really hope to get to know each of you on this call and just learn about your school, right? If it's not now, maybe we have a conversation later, but um, we want to get to know you and, and we're super grateful for the Pivot Point team for, for taking a stance on this and all of those that have taken a stance on the importance of, of having money skills. Aaron, thank you. Let me see what else we have to cover today. We're on again next week. We've done all our polling moments today. Um, and the format today, as you have seen, is a little bit different. Uh, we, like I said, we made the decision that we wanted to more informally bring this to members of the community. For those of you that show up on this weekly school roundtable, we wanted to introduce it to you first. And then we are off to the races. There's no turning back at this point. And the program I feel is really, really great. And I think it's only become greater, especially if we hear from you and uh, hear your money stories and collectively to, Rob, to what Robert and I were talking about at the uh, beginning of the industry or beginning of the call is perception issues. Um, we really can make a difference with the right education and we're so excited about it. So anyway, again, thank you for... Um, uh, thank you for your, your comments here too. And let me see here. I always like to know who's on the call. So let's see who's on the call here. All right. We have Elise, uh, and, and is on here again. And I have a phone call coming through that I have to, uh, put to voicemail. Uh, we have, uh, I'm not good with pronunciation so that it's base. Uh, sorry, Beatrice. Christine, Sissy, Dawn, Diane, Diane, um, um, uh, Eleni. Uh, Eleni, Georgia. Eleni. <laughs> Problem with me, guys. I remember faces, but I'm not good with pronouncing names. My apologies. Jamie, Jessica, Joseph, Julie. Uh, hi, Kevin. Kevin Cameron is an amazing individual. Uh, Kevin, I just love working with this guy. He's one of the many people at Pivot Point we love working with. Hi, Chris. Chris, I know you're out of Bellis. Thanks for being on here. Kip, thanks for joining us today. Hello, Lori, Lisa. Uh, Lisa Kay, also from Pivot Point. Another delight to work with. 
uh, Matt, uh, Melanie. Hello, Michael. Michael, I'm going to get you on one of these calls, by the way. You're going to be one of my guests. Uh, we have Orlando Cumberlander. I want to give a shout out to Orlando and Nicole. They really, really have been a big, big part of this program. So thank you. Uh, Patricia, uh, who else? Roxanne. Roxanne, for, I didn't recognize Roxanne from Pardo. Terry, and then Victoria Anthony mm. of Wella. So this is an all-star group that was on this call today, Erin. So. Yes, absolutely. And we have to shout out, um, thank you to Vic Victoria for taking a stance on this as well. So we're super grateful for that partnership. All right. Well, uh, these are busy individuals, Erin. And you and I are off to the races, making this thing a reality. So I guess we need to uh, end this and exit stage left. Aaron, thank you for being a guest this week. Well, on the thank you for inviting me and thank and thanks to everyone who's a part of this forum. I know this was a slightly different direction than we typically do on these and we'll get be back to our normal programming next week. But um, really just wanted to make you guys the first aware of this and I hope to be speaking with some of you soon and and helping with the, you know, the overall sustainability of the industry at large. So thank you. All right, guys, thanks again for joining us today. Thanks again for our partnerships. Um, we look forward to getting to know you in the future or getting to know you even better in the future. And we will see you next week and we will have a guest. So, all right, all the best. Bye.